Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're back up here in Bakersfield at Ironworks Speed and Custom with my friend Roger. And I'm so stoked we're finally here doing this. I mean, I'm a Mustang guy as it is. Like my first car was a 70 Mustang. I, I, I just love 65 to 70. I think it's one of the most beautiful cars of all time, personally. It's 67, right? 67, owned by Danny Schaefer. Danny has been building cars since I was in high school. We had rough renderings and through the weekly meetings, him coming through and enjoying the process of the build, he ended up in this overboard Mustang. Yeah. There's a lot of cars that are just way overdone. We really wanted this car at the end of the day to still appeal to the older generation by having a Mustang with chrome, but still having it be a definitive Mustang. We're not going super crazy on this thing where you make triple decker front lower valences and all this crazy stuff. Mustangs it's still a Mustang. never gotten lost in this car. We yeah. wanted to make a hyper car Mustang. Yeah, we'll go through the mechanical stuff and then we'll get into all the aesthetics because there's so much to it. Holy cow. What is, is this a Coyote? No, it is a 5.4 liter, the precursor to the Coyote that was in the GT500 Mustangs That's right. around 2013. So it's a flat plane crank designed for like 20 or 25 pounds of boost from the factory. It made 650 horsepower stock. So now it's probably pushing eight with a much bigger blower on it. So is it also high revving then with the flat plane? Yes, yeah, when it finally wants to go, cause it's a high revving engine, it's like scary time. Kind of scary in a good way though. That's a big engine to have to fit in there, isn't there's, it? There's like a half inch between the shock tower and the shock tower on each side. Like where are your headers at here? It's where all way down underneath. The headers have to come in from the bottom side because the motor's so big and, it, and they're custom headers. So they fit inside that and tuck up to the bottom of the frame. But you still have access to like your reservoirs and stuff, right? Like yeah. All so the clutch master cylinder, the brake master cylinders are all there. Yeah. We have our power steering reservoir over here, and your intercooler reservoir. We just took all the guts out of a PCS power steering reservoir. Took all the guts out of it, and made it the intercooler tank, so it would match with those recesses we made for the inner fenders. Yeah. We had to put the radiator cap on the firewall to get it above the top front of the engine, because the engine sits above where the radiator is. Got it, so you wouldn't get proper so you wouldn't flow. Get, so you wouldn't have an air pocket at the top of the car, or you'd have to jack up the back of the car to get that <laughs> higher than that to get the bubble out of it. So what is it made to on the transmission side? It is made into a Bowler Performance Stage 2 T56. So it's all been blueprinted, rim polished, everything to make, make the it, right stuff. just all the nice stuff to make it shift smoothly. And anytime I hear Tremec, I know it's good. I hear Bowler and I know it's great. What's the rear end on the car that it goes The rear to? end is a Ford nine inch with, yep. a, with a gear effects differential. They dyno them and do all that stuff to make them quiet and they rim polish the gears. And it's got a Holly Dominator in it, which we had to run specifically for this engine to do a bunch of crazy stuff. We had to put a GM throttle body on it because it's not your standard Coyote. I mean, I know there's no way this is sitting on stock Ford subframe. And no, the front frame rails are remade, and then it has a DSE front cross member, and then the custom built four link in the rear to achieve, not necessarily the ride height, but the tire size. If you had to pick one bad thing about the Mustangs, they're just not wide enough. There's just not enough room for tire, control arm, and engine when you pick that engine in these cars. And then what does it go into exhaust? Because this car sounds wonderful. Love the sound. Just the X pipe with the MagnaFlow mufflers and then probably the four tips in the back. There's our lunch bell. Yeah. Because the car sounds amazing, by the way, dude. I love the tone that this car makes. It's loud enough that you know it's a muscle car, it's not obnoxious. When it gets in the boost, it's loud. It's another car. It's a whole other car. It's got Willwood pedal assembly, Willwood master cylinders, all mounted to the firewall with remote um, reservoirs. It's got 14 inch Willwood brakes. Um, we've just been a long time supporter of Willwood. The wheels are one off through EVOD. We wanted something that still wasn't too modern, wasn't too pro touring, vintage-esque. Yeah. It's probably been funny with all the comments on the internet of how photography picks it up and makes the wheels look yellow. I was shocked when people were commenting about, love the car, hate the wheel colors. Like, what? Are we looking well, and, at the same car here? And, and I'll go with that, but I don't think, I think you're gonna have tons of people who just dress differently. And so they're gonna think differently, but then you get the guys who are like, oh, it should have just been all black wheels. And you're like, okay, you lost me at that. You know, keeping the chrome flavor in, but your center lock is brushed. You got the gold, but it's not like a bright, ugly gold. It's personally, I think it's gorgeous what you guys do. I, I love wheel it. choice. So you know what matters? 
Customer loves it. We just wanted to make them center locks. So we modernized it a little bit, brushed finish so that you can fit the, the socket on there tightly to remove the wheels. What are the sizes on wheels and tires? <sighs> 19s and 20s. 19s and so and by having the step lip wheel, that doesn't necessarily look like a 19. And um, what are you running tire size wise? 345 20s in the rear, and I believe that's a 265 in the front. If I remember correctly, you guys do everything in house, right? Zane at Katati Speed Shop, and these guys did the paint work for us. So you outsource paint and body I on this car, and I still and I still outsource a lot of paint and body. We use about four different shops depending sure. on the caliber of the work we're doing. All the body mods from the spoiler to the venting up front. I mean, so with, a lot. So dude. with the way these cars go together, this molding here is pretty intricate to the front end. We wanted to make it where the whole unit was an assembly so that I could machine a grill, because this grill has depth to it. If you put your finger in there, you'll see it's a half inch thick. Oh, wow. It's not, I... it's not just a flat sheet of steel that's powder coated. Yeah. So this is part of the assembly that bolts to this, because this piece up here is machined. This part here is machined to the what we made to look like a fan shroud to cover the fan and cover some of the accessories that are up here in front that are ugly. And so this is a piece of sheet metal that we made these pieces with the notches we machined to make this whole assembly. And then we fit this piece and this piece, which are the factory pieces to that. And then as you go down underneath, the scoops are all machined, but they have the same vent in them. Yeah, yeah, So they have yeah. the same depth to them on the sides. Yep. And they all bolt sandwich the sheet metal. This lower valence is machined, but we machined it in three pieces and welded it together. But that's metal? It's aluminum. I mean, aluminum. Yeah, it's. It, 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 God, the way it looks, dude, I would have guessed that was a composite piece. Fiberglass or yeah, carbon it, fiber. And instead of trying to mass produce this thing and have it made out of plastic or something, you could make that out of sheet metal and it would look fine and you'd have a little edge, but it would not have the weightiness to it that it has. Because as you come around the side is where you can see where it gets thick, it still maintains that thickness as it comes up. This rocker treatment. I wanted something in discussing with the customer that didn't look like the other rockers. So we took and 3D printed this top piece here okay. and then grafted it together in multiple pieces. And so it bolts up to the front and bolts up to the rear. And then on the bottom, it has bolts that accepts the bolts for the belly pan because it's belly pan. The whole car is belly pan. On the sides to cover the par parking brakes and some of the other accessories, the fuel pumps and things that are outside of the frame room. Got and so it. it's all undercoated because the rocks are gonna kick up under there. And then this piece is machined with a front section and a rear section, because these would be the most expensive pieces to machine. But by making them small, they're not really a big deal. And then this is just machined as one long piece that's all the same profile. So this bottom piece then's all aluminum? Yes. And you said 3D printed, what's the material? It's called Pro HD. It's a filament that you use on the printers that we have in the front office, that big gargantuan So printer. is that is that ultimately like, Plastic? Plastic. It, it, yeah. it is, okay. It's got fiberglass and tons of other stuff that's been put into it to join it all together, to make it smooth, to make yeah. it last. Yeah. And But we wanted it to where it looked like it bolts onto the car, and it does, it bolts on the car. So these scoops up here were machined from aluminum. We machined the interior vent structure to close it off to the bottom side of it. It's not all one piece, so you bolt in this piece into the exterior piece of the body, and then this fits over it. Got it. Then these side scoops down here, were machined from aluminum, but made twice as deep as they were stock. We got rid of the drip rail that was here and made this replacement here that is a stepped piece. And so we're just trying to keep this shape as it goes around and then make it disappear as it comes over here. And then it has a hard edge to disappear at the bottom of the so pillar. That's hard edge, but this fades down this fades right down. here. Mm -hmm. And then that's replacement, but stock door handle? Just a stock door handle. Literally a stock door stock handle. Chrome. Just re-chromed it at the best Jeez, place to bro. chrome. It was a great looking car to start. And so I don't so want to take great looking things away just for the sake of yeah. changing it. And maybe, and so you want to customize them, but you don't yeah. want to just customize things to customize things to just say you customized it. This vent wing window was machined to, to not operate. But so the still wind, retain the look of it. Still retain the look because you need the function to roll the windows up and down. For sure. To hold the window as it comes up. For but we, sure. we don't need all that clunkiness and we also don't need the noise when you go down the road. Did you make these? Those are mirrors are made by BBT Fab. So yeah, my buddy yeah. Troy sells those mirrors. They actually operate, they get a full range of view, shaped all the interior piece to fit that and painted it body color and then painted the whole. Troy, end. good job, dude. Good job. That's a bitchin' mirror. So I got a funny story for you. The X brace in here in the back. We were trying to come up with something to fill that void, but we wanted to make some kind of strut tower brace 
but we weren't committed to machining it yet. So on the router, we ripped out this one out of wood. We set it in the car and we're like, oh yeah, that, man, that looks really good. And I'll, so I take this wooden thing and I set it in my office and my daughters come in and they're like, dad, a butterfly. Cause it looks like a butterfly. And I'm like, what, are you gonna put a butterfly in there? But it's a freaking butterfly. That's so, I would have never picked up on that until looking right now after but you it, said it. So they took it home and colored it and did all that. And then we machined it out of aluminum. It's a butterfly, it's been a joke. I love so, it. In the back of the car, we took the, um, I guess it'd be the tail light extensions is what these were. This used to be a bolt on pot metal piece. And so we made all of this to weld into the car to replace that bolt on piece. So it gets rid of the seam and gets yeah. rid of the poor fitment. Yeah. And so yeah. all that stuff fits wow. and then it transitions into the fitment with the bumper. Cause we wanted the bumper, which this rear bumper was a nightmare to get it to look like it was body worked into the car, but it's chrome. Oh my God. You probably dude. could build a car for as much effort as it takes to fit that bumper. It's terrible. The rear valence in the back, we machined that in multiple pieces to fit under the car. We wanted the four pipes because we thought that was very modern muscle car. And then that same step, if you look right here, goes around here that matches the roof. So far, every angle that we've walked around the car, I've said that's my favorite part of the car. Yeah. I'm genuinely excited about this car. This rear treatment to me, it fits it so well. And this is all you guys, you make all this, right? We design everything in-house. We 3D print the stuff we're questionable on. Just to be just able to so look, you at, it look at it and make sure it's go. right. Because man, there's a lot of billet parts you see nowadays that people, I, I would think when they get it back, they're like, man, I wish we would have just done this a little different or that a little different. Right. And it's awesome Dude. to look at the car and just go, it needs to be a just a quarter of an inch shorter or a little bit further forward. There's backup lights underneath that that shine on the ground. Oh, that's right. I remember seeing so, that. So that are on yeah. the very bottom of the thing. Basically the valence bolts to the bottom of the car and to the bottom of the fuel tank. We're gonna get to the interior, trust me. That's always my favorite part of a car, but we didn't really touch on the hood at all. So the hood, we knew the blower was gonna stick way through the hood and we knew that we had these parameters because in the back, we've got like 3 16ths of an inch of clearance between the hood and the scoop. And so we kind of set up our must haves of what the scoop was, built it accordingly to there to get everything else to fit. I wanted to look through this and, and see, see the, the blower, blower. pulley from the front. I just always think that has that sinister look. I'm with you. The other thing we did is we took the hood scoop and we recessed it into the hood skin. So we made a stepped piece and then welded it in here so that when this is body work, if you want to feel right there, you'll feel that it's the same plane. Yeah. It's a tremendous Dang. amount of work, but it makes everything smooth. That engine is oozing on the it's, shock towers, the dude, hood. Dude, it's massive. I mean, that it, cool engine choice because it's unique and it different is. from uh, another Coyote or another mm -hmm. LS or and something. And the sound, as you'll see. A yeah. flat plane crank, the way it revs, makes it worth everything. Yeah. It's supposed to be in Wheel Hub Magazine soon. It won Street Machine of the Year this summer. Danny Schaefer. It's gonna be again at SEMA. Grand National wants me to bring it back in January to put it in the street machine thing. I mean, after it's done showing, I'd be out driving this car. Yeah. I mean, dude, at the end of the day, why else do you guys go through the effort you do? You build this to be able to drive, not yeah. just to look bitching. That's why we put all the effort into it to have big power steering reservoirs and have long power steering lines and so that you can drive the car. All right, let's do it. I've avoided looking in here, bro. So to start with, we machined the dash. We wanted it to still have the same layout, but we wanted to put better turn signal indicators. We wanted to put some of these details that go around this piece, these bolt on here so they can be individually chromed. And then this piece here, we put all this texture in it like a golf ball. Sean from Evod complained because there's 11,000 of those little dots. And so when they machined it, it was Oh for 11,000 holes. God. We 3D printed the dash pad so that it's stout. George went through and designed the entire interior after we scanned it. The center console, the center console door. Sorry to interrupt. Did you guys do your own interior in house or is this outsourced? So it's three different ways. George and I worked together. George works for me and he did all the design work. Tavis Highlander did a bunch of rendering work as we kind of deciphered our way through the styling. Mm -hmm. Originally when I started the car, I had made the deal with Gabe Lopez, or Junior. I've always thought that Gabe Senior does the best seats in the game. And so I knew for sure I wanted them to do the seats 
and I said, hey, things have gotten a little crazy, but here's where we are. The flat panels that are in here, this back panel is mm -hmm. flat. Some of these door panels are flat and those are machined PVC plastic. So this is machine PVC plastic. This is machine PVC plastic. That rear panel is. Gabe covered all this stuff while we printed or machined everything inside, whether it's aluminum or it's printed plastic. These rear interior cell panel is all 3D printed. And then the lower panel down below is all 3D printed and fits around the roll cage. You can see how all this fits together very nicely. Oh my God. The center console is machined from a front section and a back section. It's printed, I mean but the gray piece is machined aluminum that's painted. Now the crazy part is the floor. So the floor is sea deck that's in a wake boat. <laughs> All of this was designed and put into flat patterns to be machined on a router. The first guy strung me along for eight months and I found someone else at the last minute who knocked it out in eight days. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. We just wanted to maintain that same texture and look as what everything else is. Because if you look at the seats or the door panels, it has the perf. If you look in here, it has the same golf ball texture as the dash. If you look in, in these the sill seat, plates. It's like that in the sill plate. It's the sill plates. And it kind of works bro. out that this top section on the C deck has the dots, let alone the dots we put in. So you can see the recesses in the console. Lunch is over. We made all the center console pieces to where that bottom piece is seracoded with the dimples. Is it so, okay to sit in here? Yeah, sit in there. What did you start with? For Those seats? are cut down Sparkos. It's just not fair how bitching this car is. I mean, even your ergonomics, it's like your shifter's right where you want it. The pedal's great. The steering wheel, is that Spark? That is a Spark steering wheel that he machined that we, I had him do the spokes a little custom to match the centers of the wheels. And then the nut in the center we had done to Dude, match the center lock. how that matches your center lock is so, so sick. So Mind numbing. The other what, part is, these look like so, four GT almost. Yeah, those are some switches that we sell on our website. Mm -hmm. and you can use them to run power windows. You can have momentary up, momentary down. You can have on off, you can have off, on, on. And you'll see this surround that goes around the windshield and down this side. All these pieces are 3D printed to fit in the car. Really? Which is kind of new hypercar, but also old school. That's the way some of the old trim would have been, probably not on a Mustang, but more of just having the detail as you see it come up with a little bit of the fasteners. What AC, these? that's AC control. That's oh, the Dakota, really? Dakota Digital's heads up display AC control. Is this a functional lift? Yeah, just pick it up. I'm missing it. I don't, oh. That's so bitching that that's your AC controller right there. It'll have a thermostatic number that shows up on there. And so you can control the blower speed or just the heads up display. <laughs> and it fits with all the vintage air stuff from Dakota Digital. You know, all these choices are so good. I mean, I'm looking at even, rather than like this surrounding the whole shifter, it's just this interesting, unique pattern. It's just bitching design work, in my opinion. You know, it's just really that, slick design work. The side of the console has that just added detail because it just looked like it was really flat there. So this is just nothing more than just added detail, just added to, detail. to break it up a little bit. Break it up a little bit more. How many hours in this car? 10,000. 10,000 hours. You guys try that one on for size, 10,000 hours. But I mean, really, like the seating position, like I want to go drive it. it I just, I want to, I want to sit here and drive this car all damn day long. So on these door panels, we machined all of this stuff here. We machined the levers to kind of match everything else. This is, this panel is removable. It's held in here by magnets, but you have to undo the armrest first. Then this panel covers the access bolts in here. So you don't see any bolts or fasteners that hold it in place. Oh. But like oh. I was telling you, all this stuff is just smoothed up stock. I love the way there's paint on both sides of the window. I do too. And I love the way this window too. has chrome on the edge of the window. I do too. It's, it's so Mustang. It's just silly Mustang thing. It's so Mustang. But it really made it, I thought it really made it fancy. Same with your whole dash design. As radical as this is, that is 100% Mustang. 100% Mustang. I mean, like, I've seen that dash. Why redesign it so you can say you redesigned it? God dang, dude. This car, I, man, one of my favorite cars I've ever seen, bro. I mean, Wow. I ain't saying it because I'm just hanging out with you. Now, I mean, part of it is I, re I really do have a great love for Mustangs. It is over the top, mm -hmm. but it's also tastefully over the mm -hmm. top. It's, it's not too far over the top. No, When it's you really not. get up and look at it, yeah, it's, I mean, the paint is perfect. There's an immense amount of billet parts and chrome and immense yeah. amount of detail and immense amount of stuff, but it's still very much, I think even my wife or my mom or somebody, that isn't into cars would be like, man, that's, they know that's still a Mustang. Yep. I don't think the car was ever really intended to end up here. 
And then when you get to the end, it's hard not to skimp. That's the thing I probably appreciate with Danny is we were getting to the end and he did not want us to cut corners. I love he it. He still wanted all those things. I think he was floored when we won Street Machine of the Year. He's not a big talker or a big smiler, but you could see this smirk on his face for like three <laughs> seconds when he won. And so it's just interesting to see these cars and know that it's not the car, it's the journey. Yeah. It's the process of going through and talking about these things and working through the details and having them be a part of it to where when they get done, he's like, I, it wasn't my plan to paint the car gray with gold wheels and red interior, but I love everything about it. Yeah. Well, dude, we'll talk more, but let's, uh, let's put the cameras in and go for a little let's cruise. Let's go Yeah. Lightly getting on it now. Oh, Boy, dude. you put your foot in it. This thing's gonna be loud. Scary. It's like, holy shnikes, whole lot of car. It's just fun, I can't stop. <laughs> horsepower so you said 800 ish so that's yeah. putting us let's call it seven at the tire right yeah and everybody thinks they need a thousand horsepower it's like for what supposed to talk about something because I forgot. I can't. I can't at all. All I can do is all I can do is sit here and enjoy this ride is the truth, bro. I think there was other things we didn't talk about like the uh oh yeah that it's got a cage in it. It's got a four-point cage in it. It's all welded to the frame. It is removable to bodywork and paint it and put the interior in it. But it's just meant for looks and a little bit of structure if yeah you got stupid. Yeah. We just, it's gonna be a beast to drive. There's a ton of power. Um, there's probably too much to where you're gonna, on public roads with rocks and things like that. Yeah. And, but it's really a nice driver. It's very comfortable. 
That's what I was um, just going to ask you. So you're happy with the the way it's driving, the way the suspension set, the tune. The, 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 I might add a little bit more rebound into it just to give it a little bit more feel. But at this point, it feels really good. Obviously, that changes wherever you drive it. Sure. I always kind of get used to We do so many repeat customers that I learn where these guys drive their cars. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, So yeah. different roads are different. Some roads are choppy. Some highways are asphalt. I really think at some point, Danny would drive this car a lot. I don't think he's going to park it somewhere overnight. He's not do, like show car guy, right? Yeah. Like, he's going to drive mean, he enjoys stuff. that stuff. I mean, everybody wants to have people look at their car. Sure. But his main goal is just to build something that's, you know, he, he, he enjoys driving them. I mean, he's going to have other cars that he'll drive to the barber shop or he'll drive to lunch with the boys. I don't see this thing getting parked at the, the lunch spot yeah. parking lot. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. can see him driving it somewhere to, you know, I don't know. But there's no reason you wouldn't be able to drive it quite a ways, really. Yeah. I mean, it's comfortable for someone who's not six foot twelve. You know, you get in some cars in the ergonomics. Car. I mean, for you, every ergonomics got to suck. But I mean, for me, an average size guy, yeah. sit in that driver's seat. Boom, let's go drive. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah, Everything's we, where you want it to be. We, we put a bunch of effort into that. I mean, you'll see in those Chevelles that we got that I put a bunch. The seats are down low. We did stuff like that because we put power seats in it to make it where it's adjustable for a guy like you that's 5'10", yeah. or a guy like me that's six foot six. Yeah. And so you can, it's just super comfortable on a long trip. And, but that takes, that's a couple weeks worth of work to countersink the seats and make all that happen with the power seats. Yeah. You made me smile. <laughs> this is, dude. You can feel it squat and go. You can. How many miles on this now? It says 21, but I don't think that's true. I think it's it's probably 50. This is probably, this is the furthest it's been driven at one time. No, I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about total miles on the car. Yeah, it says 21, but I don't think that's correct. Oh, so you only have 50-ish miles on yeah, the car in total. Got it. Chevy guy for I'm the most good, part. I'm just a good running car guy, but man, that high revving V8. It's been... bitching. What is it? What do you have a rev limiter set out on this? I'm gonna guess 8,000. I don't even. I didn't even look to see where I'm at. This car's super planted, and I'm yeah, I'm feeling good enough now. Or I thought it would be a little more squirrely than it is. Dude, it feels ridiculously planted. Got me reaching for a handle. Oh, man. <laughs> man, you guys, we shoot a lot of cars. We shoot a lot of really wonderful, exceptional cars. This thing is just mind numbing to me how good it is. Not just the look of it, but the sound of it, the way it rolls down the road, the way it plants when he accelerates. I'm telling you, that to me is just perfection. What an exceptional, beautiful, amazing car. I'm, I'm so stoked we got to finally shoot this car. And more to come with Roger and Ironworks Speed and Custom. Thanks as always, you guys, for hanging and watching what we do. And I'll see you in the next one. All right, man. Later.